This is the Shanghai Post Museum. In 1949, this was the General Post Office building, one of the finest buildings here in the heart of Shanghai. In May 1949, as the Battle of Shanghai moved closer and closer to the city, this building became the centerpiece of the nationalist plan to prepare their urban warfare defenses. The Suzhou River runs through the center of Shanghai. Along the north banks were some high-rising and sturdy buildings, the Broadway Mansion, the Post Office Building, the Embankment Building. The nationalist defenders were determined to fight to the last man of this line of defense. From where I'm standing, you can see that this was the perfect position for the defenders, with machine guns set up in the windows of the building, sandbagged bunkers and armored vehicles on the north bank, the defenders could easily pin down the PLA soldiers trying to cross the bridge below. Unless, of course, the PLA used heavy artillery. That was precisely the concern of many Westerners close to the battlefield. Right next to the post office building is the Embankment Building, the biggest apartment building in the Far East. At the time, it housed more than 1,000 residents with 300 foreigners. American newspaperman Bill Powell was among them. He was the editor of a famous English language magazine, China Weekly Review. By this time, he had prepared an editorial for the next issue. We welcome the change that has come about and hope that the arrival of the People's Liberation Army will mark the beginning of a new era. An era in which the people of China can now begin to enjoy the benefits of good government. But now, as the battle moved closer and his apartment building also became a nationalist holdout, he was anxious and scared like everyone else. Would the PLA lose their patience and bring out their artillery? Well, the Battle of Suzhou River was underway, an American journalist, Harrison Foreman, was on the rooftop of the Cathay Hotel, looking down upon PLA soldiers attacking nationalist defenders in the Huangpu Garden. And what he saw surprised him. He jotted down quickly in his notebook. Amazing that Palu haven't tried to enter hotel. Their discipline is really something how easy it would be for them to come in, set up some machine gun on the roof or in the bunside rooms and blast the Garden Park Nationalist defenders. By this time, the battle for most of the southern part of Shanghai was already over. So Harrison Foreman decided to walk there to have a look. When he walked to Nanjing Road, he saw something even more surprising. He added what he saw in his notebook single non-com with a tommy gun patrols nanking road like a mother protecting sleeping children it's a touching scene these youngsters must be dead tired marching and fighting for days and nights the rattle of gunfire doesn't disturb them they are sound asleep all afternoon they had slept soundly along nanking road on the sidewalks a most incredible thing for a conquering army to do The standoff at Suzhou River lasted nearly two days. Despite heavy casualties, the People's Liberation Army on the south bank of Suzhou River waited patiently and chose to encircle the line of defense instead of blasting their way through. No foreign residents of the embankment building were hurt. Bill Powell told reporters that a collective sigh of relief went up when the battle ended. The residents later found out the PLA was strictly instructed not to use heavy artillery inside the city of Shanghai. And they were not allowed to enter any private properties, no matter what the sacrifice. The finest buildings of Shanghai were left intact. Together with the revitalized Suzhou River, they are still one of the most beautiful sceneries of Shanghai.